Hey guys, it's Delora Dabbles, and I am filming outside at a park. I'm running a lot of errands in another town on the Gulf Coast. And so, anywho, um, let's get into today's video is going to be about the Dark Winds TV series as a whole, the entire first season, and what I think about it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Jim Chi and Bernie Manuelito getting together doesn't happen until the very end of the 18 book series that Tony Hillerman wrote. So the fact that they get together in the TV show in the first season feels very unearned, right? And also, again, Bernie is supposed to be a rookie. And so one of the things that Jim Chi struggles with is the fact that he is her boss. So he can't ask her out on a date, right? And that, that nuance is completely gone from the TV show because they just give them the relationship in the first season, right? Um, Jim Chi in the novels also has two failed relationships, right? Which also makes his relationship with Bernie feel very unearned because he had his heart broken twice in the books. Uh, the first time there was a, um, a white woman who was a teacher on the reservation, right? Um, and they kind of fell in love, but she wanted to bring him off of the reservation to live in her world, right? And that she didn't want to raise children on the reservation, which was like a slap in the face to Jim, but he still loved her and wanted to try to make it work. And she just completely refused to make it work unless he left the res. Uh, then he started dating Janet Pete a few books after they broke up. Uh, and Janet Pete, is Navajo but she's like half and half and she was raised off the reservation and it turns out she wanted the same thing she wanted him to leave the reservation and have a very uh, very much more materialistic white society life and that's whenever Jim Chi was like you know all these women want me to be something I'm not you know um, and then he finally meets Bernie and they actually have a real relationship. They're both very traditionalists, right? They're, they're Navajo traditionalists. They both have the same values and everything. Um, yeah, and that felt to me like Jim Chi earned his relationship, his good relationship with Bernie uh, in the books, whereas in the TV show, doesn't feel that earned. Yes, he came back to rescue them from I cannot remember because he's not in the books. I only remember his nickname is High Pockets because that's what Lee Porn calls him. I cannot remember the FBI, the head FBI guy's actual name. We're just going to call him High Pockets because that's funny and definitely describes him. So whenever Jim Chi figures out that High Pockets is, um, you know, in on everything with, um, what's his name? So, uh, cause he pretends to be his brother, Benjamin. That's another thing about this whole series is that, um, Benjamin, so the father, like the, the, the priest, all of, like, like he's supposed to be in the story in the books. Right. And, uh, his like Buffalo society leading twin brother guy, um, he's actually, um, sorry, I completely lost my train of thought. What the hell was I saying? Ah, I had a moment. Okay. Yes, so in the books, right, the, the two twins, I'm just going to call them the priest twin and the criminal twin. The priest twin actually has this rich woman following him around because he was in Italy, right? And he was um, in the Catholic Church in Italy. And this rich woman comes and follows him to the reservation because she wants what she can't have right and so she is determined to get this priest to not take his final vows right because he's in seminary she's trying to get him to not take his final vows meanwhile he's just coming to the reservation to mourn his grandfather not father I think in the tv show it's father in the books I'm pretty sure it's their grandfather and they completely don't even mention in the TV show why he gets killed, but we'll get to that. So you've got this priest who's literally there, 
right? You've got his twin brother that's not pretending to be him, but has plans for him later, right? Let's get to that cave in the TV show. Um, the cave is actually has a lot more importance in the books than they ever give it in the TV show. In the TV show, it's just a cave, right? Well, in the books, this cave and the reason why, right, the criminal twin kills the grandfather is because this cave is sacred to the family, right? Um, different, uh, this, uh, there's a cave painting, right? Like a sand painting right that they use for their ceremonial purposes right but this one was never uh, it was left intact to be a learning tool right for shamans to come and, and replicate the sand painting right so they didn't want to erase it because they wanted it to last forever right as a as a learning tool well this particular these sand paintings in the Tony Hillerman lore right because again we're not talking about real Navajos we're talking about Tony Hillerman's novels um, this all happened in the time period and this is real history where a lot of Navajos were being kidnapped and death marched to Fort Sumter all right and um, some Navajos were able to hide out right and and fight the good fight until they were eventually released right uh, and in this cave, that's whenever the time period of these sand paintings were created within the mythos of this story, right? So the way that Tony Hillerman brings in real historical pieces into his, into his novels and works them in is something that I really admire about him. But anyway, moving on. Those sand paintings are in the cave. It is the grandfather's job to protect the cave, right? And because the criminal twin wanted to use the cave for these reasons, right, these criminal acts and to hide out, he had to get rid of the grandfather who was protecting the cave, right? And at the beginning, I hate how they killed um, the Atsidi girl. I forget her first name. They killed the Atsidi girl and uh, Hostin So, right? Um, they didn't kill them in a hotel room, right? The Ad City girl was with um, her grandmother, Margaret Cigarette, uh, at um, Hostine So's like living place in his dwellings, right? And um, Margaret Cigarette was there to look into his soul and see what was making him sick. And Hostine So wasn't telling her about the cave painting and he wasn't telling her about his grandson, his criminal grandson coming back, right? But anyway, so she's blind, but she goes and has like, um, does her shaman thing and has like a journey of some kind and has these impressions come at her. And whenever she wakes up and goes back to the house, she finds her granddaughter and Hostine so killed. Um, Yes, so she's actually out in a canyon, and that's why uh, the criminal twin didn't see that she was there, right? So I feel like in the TV show, having it happen in a hotel room made it seem really like shady when nothing about what they were doing there was shady. Um, and again, Lieutenant Lee Porn in the books does not have a son, so that whole thing is very strange, but I will say, that they are setting up the next season to be about uh, People of Darkness, which is the next book, um, well, or another book in the series. I don't know if it's chrono chronologically next, um, but we actually haven't gotten to the book Dark Winds yet because there's also, um, there's also a small plane crash in that one, right? Tony Hillerman and his plane crashes, but anyway. Um, we haven't even gotten into that one, which might be like, it might be a wrap up and it could be that People of Darkness is going to be one of those, um, storylines that always hangs in the background, right? And never really is, you know, uh, a finale piece until much, much later, but they are setting it up. They have the oil rig explosion that possibly wasn't an explosion. They're probably about a quarter, a third or a quarter of the way through that novel, right? Uh, as you will see, 
people are going to start getting sick that were associated with that oil rig and uh, also the Native American church in the book, right? Air quotes Native American church because it's not the real Native American church. Anyway, it's a fictional one in the book. I love People of Darkness. It is my absolute favorite one. So I really hope that they do that particular mystery justice. But anywho, back to this season and what really happened in the books or what happened in the books. I don't want to say really. But uh, basically the criminal twin plans on blowing up the cave with his friend with the scar across his face trapped inside and his brother's body inside and they're going to mistake his brother's body for his and he's going to get out scot-free right but that includes sacrificing his friend in the books there is no crooked fbi agent that's in on it right um so that's all just a complication that they added to the book that i really instead of putting in an fbi agent they should have just put in his twin brother to begin with and it would have been a much better more well-rounded story i liked the way Tony Hillerman uh, wrote the story. I would have liked to see more of his complexities intact. I will say, he went a little bit melodramatic, Tony Hillerman did in this book. Instead of them kidnapping a Mormon family, the Buffalo Society kidnapped an entire troop of uh, uh, Boy Scouts, right? Um, at the end, it is a very, very good ending because the friend with the scar on his face the criminal twin is always leaving him in the shittiest situations where he's going to die, right? And he's like, I am immortal, I can't die. I will never, I will never feel the blessing that is death. I have been cursed to live forever, right? And that's what he actually believes, right? So in the book, he blows up the cave with the criminal twin in it. And he lets Leaphorn get away. Because just like in the TV show, as in the books, the, the, the guy with the scar across his face realizes everything that his friend has been doing to throw him under the bus, the lies, the manipulation, and all of that. And he just decides to blow everything up, which also shuts the cave and leaves the sand paintings undisturbed so that white men will never find them or put them in a museum or desecrate them in any way that it is going to forever be a sacred secret in the Navajo lands, right? Anyway, I did like in the TV show that the friend with the scar, the guy with the scar, ended up somehow getting away because remember, Lee Porn confronts Jim about the money and somehow the guy with the scar got away and he grabbed the money. And so I kind of liked after reading the book, right? And knowing all of the shit that that guy was put through by the criminal twin, right? It was nice in the TV show to see him kind of get a happy ending. I'm not gonna lie, it uh, that felt earned only because I read the books. Uh, it would be interesting to see if he comes back in later seasons, that character, but I digress. Now, I do want to say in the last couple of minutes that I have here, uh, I did read a very interesting article on uh, Native News Online, and apparently the uh, producers of the show did not give the actors enough training in speaking the uh, Navajo or Diné language, right? They call themselves Diné. Um, and that a lot of the Diné people watching the TV show were immediately not just like offended, but it felt like a caricature, like they were watching a caricature of themselves. None of the cast are actually Diné indigenous people. They all come from several different tribes. This article does say that the acting was good. They just really would have appreciated a speech coach actually teaching them how to speak their Diné lines in a proper Diné dialect and actually pronounce everything because these uh, indigenous languages are very tonal, right? It's very easy to think you're saying one thing and you're thinking another thing, right? Uh, thinking and you're saying another thing. So uh, I really hope to see that change in the seasons to come. I know that it's already been approved for a second season, so I'm really excited about it. It's just, you know, like, um, as someone who doesn't speak Navajo and has never heard Navajo being spoken 
in real life. I didn't even catch that until I read that article and was informed by the Native American people watching the show how they felt. So um, yeah, I think in the future I will be definitely making sure that I read reviews by uh, Native American people about these shows that I like and hopefully they will fix Dark Winds uh, in particular will kind of fix this practice of only half-assing these indigenous languages. But other than that, absolutely love the show. I hope that you guys enjoyed the season. Um, yeah, and uh, I won't be doing one of these until next year. So you guys, if, if y'all don't like my Dark Winds and Tony Hillerman videos, you won't have to watch another one for at least a year. And for those of you who do, I hate that the season was only six episodes. Can we talk about how disappointing that was? But until next time, happy dabbling and bye-bye.